Okay, today I'm going to be testing if I can unmix a liquid. So I have here a jar of water and some food coloring. So first, let me put some drops of food coloring in here and mix it up, and we'll see if we can unmix it. Blue, red, and yellow. And now that I've got them in there, let me mix it up. Okay, with it fully mixed now, now let's see if I can unmix this. So there's two ways to do this. The first way is to reverse the arrow of time, like this. So you can see that as the arrow of time reverses, entropy actually decreases. But unfortunately, since we don't know how to reverse the arrow of time, we have to come up with another clever idea on how to unmix liquids. So in this situation, the reason that I can't unmix the liquids is because they were mixed in a way that was truly random. And when there's turbulence generated, turbulence is based on randomness. And there's no way to reverse the random events that happen to mix the liquid, so I can't unmix this liquid. But what if I could mix the liquid in such a way that I don't generate any turbulence? So what if I used food coloring what, that was the exact density of the water, and I used a high viscosity liquid so that when I stirred it, it stayed in laminar flow, meaning there's no turbulence. So now instead of water, I have some Carol syrup. And this syrup is a lot more viscous than water. So when I stir it, it should keep it in laminar flow, meaning there's no randomness, no turbulence in the liquid. And I'm also not gonna stir it with random motion with a fork. I'm gonna keep the motion very ordered. So I'm just gonna turn a secondary cylinder inside of the outer cylinder. And so this stirring will create a circular motion stirring. And then I also have some Caro syrup dyed with different colors. So it has about the same viscosity and same density as the liquid in here. Okay, I'll put the dye in. I just put my yellow one in. Let's put red. Okay, now blue. Okay, so I have all my colors in here and I'm gonna turn the inner cylinder now. These sticks on top are just to hold the inner cylinder in place so that it doesn't slip or create turbulence or any random movement that I can't undo. Okay, let's give it a turn and see what it looks like. Okay, you can see our colors are mostly gone. Looks like they've mixed together. But now, since nothing was random, I can just undo the movement that I did, and let's see if I can unmix it. Okay, here we go. Reverse it, and it's back to the original color lines. So you can see I completely reversed the mixing. That's awesome. Okay, let's try it again with just red and green. These we could see clearer. Looks like they mixed together. Now let's try to turn them back. Wow. <laughs> Okay, let's see how many turns we can do and still unmix them. Okay, this is one full rotation. Let's try one more. Okay, at two full rotations, you can see it's completely mixed. You can see some streaks of red and green, but for the most part, the red and green have now mixed completely together. So now let's unmix them. Uh, 
There's one turn. And two turns. <laughs> Pretty good. And you can see there's no die on this side. So you see, the more turns that I do, the less I can unmix it. And that's because as I'm turning it, I am actually introducing some little aspects of randomness. Sometimes my hand slips a little bit and moves the inner jar a little bit, and I don't remember when that happened, so I can't reverse it. And so what that means is I end up mixing something that I can't unmix because I've done something that's random and I don't remember exactly when it happened and I can't reverse it. So the first question, did I break the second law of thermodynamics in unmixing the liquid? And the answer is no. Because you remember that when I'm turning it, I'm actually rubbing together the layers of the corn syrup and that creates friction. And you remember that friction creates heat and an increase in heat increases entropy or the degree of disorder in the system. And that's because the molecules are moving faster and so there's more random activity. And so that means an increase in entropy. And so basically, even though I unmix the liquid and the dyes look more ordered, I actually increase the entropy in the system. And so even in unmixing a liquid, you still can't violate the second law of thermodynamics, which ultimately states that the entropy of the universe is always increasing. And that means that in any process that takes place, the end result is that the entropy of the universe increased. In fact, a better definition of what entropy is, is not just that it's disorder, but a better idea of what entropy is, is the amount of energy that cannot be converted back into work. And so basically, as entropy increases, the availability of energy to do work decreases. And that's actually a little bit of a scary thought because that means that as time goes on, entropy increases, which means the availability of energy to do any mechanical work is decreasing. And that means at some point in the lifetime of our universe, entropy will have increased so much so that no work can be done. That means that the entire universe is basically at equilibrium and nothing can happen. So basically that means you could never have an engine working when everything's at thermal equilibrium and chemical equilibrium because the reaction could never take place to make the piston expand. And scientists call this state the heat death of the universe. And they call it the death of the universe because at that point nothing can happen. That means everything everywhere in the entire universe is exactly the same. Don't worry, the heat death of the universe is a very long time away. It's about 10 to the 103 years away. So even in just living and thinking, you're increasing the entropy of the universe. For example, if you read Stephen Hawking's Brief History of Time, he mentions that if you remember every word in his book, your memory will have recorded about 2 million pieces of information. That means the order in your brain will have increased by about 2 million units. But the disorder actually increases more than that. Because while you're reading the book, you will have burned around a thousand calories of ordered energy and turned it into disordered energy. And this increases the disorder of the universe by about 20 million, 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 million units. And that's 10 million, million, million times the increase in the order of your brain by reading the book. But as Vsauce put it in one of his videos, don't be ashamed about increasing the entropy of the universe, but be proud that you left your entropy signature on the universe forevermore. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video comes out. And leave me any comments or suggestions you have in the comments section. You can leave me any questions too about this video. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.